Hello, can you? Oh, there you go. Okay, now I actually see my screen. I apologize because I could not hear you. If somebody could actually comment or write something on the comment section. There you go. Okay, good evening everyone. For people who are actually in the US, uh, for people who are in the Philippines, magandang gabi po sa inyo. Maayang buntag for people who are Bisaya from Mindanao or from Visayas. So I apologize, I have some technical difficulties a while ago. Okay, our topic for today would include or would cover provisions in the contract and employment restrictions, breach of contract and contract buyouts. But as of the time being, we'll just wait for some other people. It's my fault, but I'm recovering from the technical difficulty. So again, if you have some questions, pakisunglat lang sa baba so I could actually cover them. Though I have some uh, gathered some of your questions earlier, so I will try to make my best to answer the, the questions now. Pabutin lang natin ng mga 20 viewers because that's what I've requested. And as soon as we receive 20 viewers, then I will start go live. There you go, we're gaining. Okay, good evening everyone. This is Nika Raquel. I'm trying to answer most of your questions. So, if you could actually write below uh, the comment section ang mga tanong nyo. So, I'll try to answer them as much as possible. Um, give me thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, answer your questions if you want to type in Bisaya Tagalog English I could actually speak those and again uh, write down your questions below so I could answer them uh, we will only be live for the next 45 minutes to an hour so I uh, will try our best to optimize the time that I will be with you so I'll start off with talking about uh, since our topic ngayon is yung employment contracts kasi maraming nagsisend sa akin ng messages uh, asking about hey can they actually transfer agencies while their uh, application is in process uh, that's why we focus on the parts of the contract and then we will correlate that to immigration issues I'll be switching screen from myself talking and also I'll talk about on the screen so at least the people live could actually see what we are talking about. The general rule for contracts is it is it serves as the law between the parties. So, ibig sabihin, pag binagyan kayo ng kontrata and you sign the contract, then whatever terms and conditions stated in the contract serve as the law between you and the preparer of the contract. So, in this case, it could be your employer, potential employer, or the agency that offers you the contract and then as soon as you sign the contract that it binds you and we'll talk about what that meant as we go along one important provision in your contract is the effectivity date of the contract this is the start of the contractual obligations meaning ang ibig sabihin nun, yung potential employer nyo as soon as you sign the contract would now start filing the petition and the employee is subjected to the restrictions and we'll talk about specific restrictions later so ibig sabihin kung kunwari sinabi ng restriction ng kontrata nyo na you could not enter into any other contract with another agency or direct uh, employer then that binds you so if you uh, breach that agreement then damages you are not subjecting yourself to damages this is not the start of the employment. 
So, hindi ibig sabihin na nag-sign na kayo ng contract na kayo ng employer. So, I just want to take time explaining yung effectivity ng contract at saka yung start an employment. When you sign the contract, it doesn't mean that you are already employed. It only means that kung ano yung mga terms ng kontrata nyo will bind you and the employer. So, yun yung klaruhin ko lang ha. And again, once you sign the contract, this will now trigger the employer or potential employer nyo na magpa-file na ng petition. They will now hire lawyers to file the labor certification or file the petition itself to USCIS. Well, time being, uh, you are now committing and waiting for your priority dates. Again, this is not the start of your employment. Another important provision in your contract is the employment uh, period. Let's talk about first yung pre-employment. So in the case of nurses, ito yung time na sinasabi ng potential employer nyo that you need to pass the RNN class or else you have to, pro to get all the state licenses and then you will be interviewed and accepted by the potential employer or agencies. This is when by the time na uh, nagpa-process pa, pa lang kayo ng inyong papers waiting your priority dates. Okay? There is one specific question na na-receive ko. Pwede ba daw uh, mag-process ng petition na wala pa kayong uh, hindi pa kayo, wala pa kayong license from the state that you intend to work for? No, you cannot. If you don't have the required licenses required for you to work as an RN in the United States, then the petition will be denied. No? So you really have to equip yourself uh, look into the state where you intended to work for and then uh, get the required licenses. Another question that I is whether or not ang sino ba daw ang magbabayad ng expenses related to obtaining all these licenses. Now, there is no requirement for the employer to cover those expenses. Uh, though some employers, ang ginagawa nila ino offer nila na we will reimburse you for the expenses that you spent uh, in taking your INCLEX, IELTS, or obtaining your uh, state licenses para lang maingan nyo kayo na mag-apply sa kanila instead of going to other agencies. But as, per, as far as the law is concerned, there is no requirement by the employer to pay for those expenses. Obligasyon mo yun. Okay? Now, again, ibabalik ko lang. You have to equip yourself. You have to have your INCLEX uh, pumasa ka na doon, you have your state licenses covered so that the, it will be a smooth, smooth journey for you. Next topic would be uh, meeting minimum requirements to pass the embassy interview. So, ibig sabihin, hanggat hindi ka pumasa sa interview for your green card, you are not uh, hired yet. No? So, these are the pre-employment conditions. Uh, then pass the green card interview. At the, at the interview mo, uh, you can still be denied if the officer will not be convinced that you have all or that you pass all the minimum requirements para dun sa green card application mo. So, in the contract later, pag-usapan natin na may mga requirement kayo that you have to maintain direct patient relationship else your visa will not be approved. That is very important, No? Pero sa tagal kasi nang hinihintay nyo, uh, minsan uh, nagtitake kayo ng jobs other than the nursing. Tapos, uh, nawawala kayo nung sa requirement that you have to have the direct patient relationship for the last 12 months. Unfortunately, that can be a ground for the denial of your in, uh, green card inter, uh, embassy interview. Now, other round, the reasons bakit madideny ka sa embassy is because lack of documentation or lack ng potential employer mo. So, ibig sabihin, posibleng nagbago ang job description mo instead or different from the one that they filed at the labor certification or nung initiate nila yung petition mo and then that can also be a ground uh, for the denial. Yes, I will be talking about the buyout uh, issues later, Joshua. Uh, we'll just talk about the pre-employment first. Okay? So, as of this stage, hanggat hindi mo makuha yung green card mo, at hindi ka papasa doon sa embassy, your contract or your, your, your employment has not started yet. So, ang question ngayon is, 
the employment start. When you read into your contract, your employment can actually start upon completion of the employment conditions. Ibig sabihin, uh, meron ka ng state licenses, pumasa ka na sa INCLEX, sa IL, sa visa screen, and then you already have gone through the embassy and you already passed and you have your immigrant visa or you have your work visa already uh, given to you by the embassy. Then, uh, the employer can actually say, now your employment started with us. It's also possible na even if my green card ka na, pumasok ka na dito sa, state, sa US, your, em your employer could actually say, your employment start on a specific date. It could be one month after you arrive or two months after you arrive. It's okay. But then again, uh, remember na ang terms of the contract serve as the law between the parties. So it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't mean that it is a breach of contract. Kung kunwari, um, hindi pa obligated ang employer niyo to start the employment, depending on the terms of the contract. Okay, may tanong dito. Uh, what if daw, uh, dumating na sila sa Amerika, may green card na sila, pero ang tagal ng pagdi-deploy sa kanila ng employer. Does that really considered, uh, is it considered a breach of contract? Unfortunately, what defines breach of contract are the terms of the contract. So kung sinabi ng kontrata nyo na the employer is obligated to give you a specific job upon arrival in the US, then one month pass, wala kayo na, then it's a breach of contract. Pero if there is no guarantee by the employer na upon arrival nyo sa US, may, 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 may deploy kayo agad, then that will not be considered as a breach of contract. So again, at this point in time, kalorin ko lang, the effectivity of the contract is different from the employment start date. And that will be very important when we actually talk about buyouts and restrictions later. Termination of employment. Unfortunately, in America, there is a uh, general rule dito is employment at will. Ibig sabihin, you can be fired by your employer with cost or no cost at all, but except when there is discrimination issues involved. But I will not be talking about the discrimination issues, but ang sinasabi ko lang is unlike in the Philippines, uh, labor law is not very protective in the US. You can be fired anytime. You can be fired without notice. Okay? Uh, and if you fire them, it's not considered a breach of contract. Now, your contract with your potential employer or employer can also be uh, terminated upon the expiration date of the contract. When you read into the contract, may sinasabi doon na you will, ser you, will be, you will be considered as an employee ng company nyo after 3 years or after completion of X number of hours of duty sa, sa employer nila. Or kung, walang, kung, silent ang, kung silent ang kontrata nyo, then you are considered an employee for as long as you keep working there. Uh, lastly, completion of agreed duty hours. Oh, ito yung sinasabi nga natin na as far as you are bind, you're bound ka sa kontrata and they are saying you have to work with us for 10,000 hours, then you are considered an employee with them until that number of hours is completed. Uh, I I will read some of the questions here. Attorney, the contract has no buyout clause. The court, okay, we'll talk about the buyouts later. Sir, my son is going age out po sa December. Ano po ba dapat gawin? Um, I would recommend na kung mag age out na yung mga anak nyo, you have to talk to your lawyer. There is a provision in immigration process that they could actually escalate the case kung ang one of the beneficiary will be aging out in the next six months. So talk to them. Uh, Joshua, pwede po ba installment ang buyout contract attorney? Again, we'll talk about the buyouts later. No? Kasi you really need to understand uh, kailan yung effectivity ng contract nyo, kailan yung start ang, 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 ang employment nyo before we can only talk about the contracts or the buyouts. Okay, employment restrictions. Maraming nagtatanong sa akin. Uh, ang kontrata attorney... Sinasabi sa akin that I cannot enter into another contract with another employer, agency, or private persons. Is it allowed? Yes, it is a, it is a valid provision. So, uh, ang sinasabi normally, ang sinasabi dun sa kontrata, 
When you sign the contract, it says that you cannot enter into any other agreements for the next two years or three years. You are bound by that term kasi po meron makayo. If you violate that term, then um, you are now subjecting yourself to the damages and so on. So that's why it's very important na basahin yung kontrata and we'll talk about what you can do to actually protect your interests. Second uh, point dito sa restriction, you cannot accept other employment, direct or indirect, during the validity of the contract. So, minsan, the contract are stated in a different manner whether ang cut-off nila sa one year or two years, three years, na hindi ka pwede mag-enter ng contract would come from effectivity ng contract or from the start ng employment mo. You just really have to understand that para um, ma ma-protect yung sarili nyo. Uh, there is a question from Mark, attorney, do you tackle employment immigration by adjustment of status? Uh, what does that mean? Will you tackle employment immigration by adjustment of status? Uh, we'll talk about that later uh, pagdating dun sa process and in terms of costs. Okay, must, maximum restriction. In New York, in New York State, it's legal to actually restrict the person uh, from working for a specific employ, uh, employer between one to two years. It is state-specific. If you want to challenge that, then a different conversation. If you are you feel like you don't want to work with your employer anymore, by the time na nandito kayo, then talk to an employment lawyer. Now, there are remedies of that. But uh, as far as the New York law is concerned, one to two years is acceptable. Beyond that, you can challenge the provision of the contract. Next topic, questions because I, w I don't intend to use the whole one hour and bore you with my PowerPoint presentation. I would rather answer your questions. Dito na tayo sa breach of contracts by the employer. So, hindi ibig sabihin na nag-file ka ng contract na kayo lang ang posibleng mag-breach. The employer can also commit acts that will be considered a breach at kung nag-breach, then that will free you up. No? So, you will not be liable anymore under the terms of the contract. So, kunwari, yung employer nyo, hindi siya nagbabayad sa salary stipulated in the contract. Then, that's breach on their side. In human working conditions, hindi ka tanggap-tanggap. Nag-usap kayo na ganito lang yung working hours nyo, that you'll be traveling X number of miles from work, uh, from your home, and they violated that, then that will be considered a breach. So, again, a breach of contract on the part of the employer, you will be justified in leaving the contract kasi sila ang may sala nung una. Okay? Non-compliance of minimum wage as far as the state and federal laws are concerned is also considered a breach of the contract. Okay? So, but kung wari ba may breach ang employer, what do you do? Do you, do you file cases against them immediately? No, you have to have you have to be very diplomatic in this approach, no? So kung kuan kunwari nakita na ni employer may mga violations ang employer different from the terms of the contract, then your first approach is talk to your employer and tell them that bakit hindi ko nakukuha yung mga pinapromise niyo. Now, if the employer doesn't listen to you after na ni bring out mo yung mga breach nila, then talk to an employment lawyer. No? To protect yourself. The good thing about the U.S. though is, unlike in the Philippines, very strongly enforce ang retaliation and against retaliation laws dito sa Amerika. So, hindi ka nila pwede tanggalin sa trabaho dahil nagreklamo ka o nagreport ka sa Department of Labor uh, or nagfile ka ng case against them. So, are, you are very protected here in the U.S. and resolution of the case is very fast or, or at least faster compared sa Philippines. So, know your rights. Speak up. Kasi kung hindi ka mag-speak up, then no one will speak for you. So, but again, be diplomatic about this. Talk to your employer. Uh, my questions lang dito from Rosnal Richmond Sian. Attorney, can you give alignment, alignment on country of chargeability? Because, okay, we'll talk about that another day. Kasi hindi siya part ng employment at saka sa immigration issue. Moving on to the next topic. Uh, ano naman yung mga examples ng breach of contracts by the employee? 
So kunwari ikaw naman ang nag-absent, hindi ka nagpapaalam, then that's also there's actually certain days uh, where in the employer depende ito ngayon sa employee policy what we consider is a breach of contract, no? As uh, kasi nga you are bound by the terms of the contract that you will be working for them for two months, three months and so on. Then uh, pag malam, marami na yung absences mo, then that can be considered as a breach of contract. Uh, violating restrictions. So ibig sabihin uh, sinabihan ka na hindi ka pwede mag-enter into other uh, into any other um, agency pero nag-apply ka pa rin you entertained uh, their calls and their meetings then that's violating of the terms of the contract then you are now subjecting yourself to the damages as provided in the contract okay uh, failure to maintain employment conditions kunwari licenses uh, kasi especially in America where licensing is very important and you fail to maintain that uh, then that could be considered as a breach of contract by the employee. And the employer uh, could actually now have the legal right to ask damages from you kasi uh, loss of income din nila yun and so on and so forth. Okay? Uh, again, when there is a breach on the part of the employee, the employer normally resorts to diplomatic means, ipapatawag kanila, HR will be intervening, and then, kung matigas na gaulo mo, determination process might come in, and then you are subject to damages. Okay, my question dito. My last bedside nursing experience is back 2014. If ever my interview ako sa embassy by this year for AB3 with just six months of recent nursing experience, okay lang ba yan? Okay, this is a very good, uh, very important question, no? Kasi this relates to restrictions or at least requirements ng uh, visa issuance or approval. When the employer kasi filed your petition, there is a job description related to the position being offered to you. At the time of the review of the application, they look into the requirements of the job and if the job actually requires, let's say, 12 months of uh, direct patient uh, relationship and in your case, 6 months ka lang, then you, basically technically speaking you are now you are not eligible or you did not comply the requirements of the job no pagdating sa interview titingnan ulit ngayon ng officer kasi that's the requirement bakit that's the reason why the employer is asking certification from you whether or not you have that 12 months requirement for direct patient or kung anong mang requirement ng ng employer kasi they are justified to requesting that from you kasi that helps you get an assurance na ma-approve ka or ma-issue yung visa. So, you really have to honor whatever uh, requirements the employee is asking you as far as the technicality ng requirements ng position mo. So, whether it's a number of hours of direct patient requirement or specific licenses or specific certificates, it is your obligation to maintain that or obtain that. Now, question. Uh, Pag hindi ka ba pumasa sa interview, will, at, uh, will that be considered a breach of contract on your part? Not necessarily. No? Kasi you are bound by the terms na, okay, the employer may refile an application for you until such time that you obtain the required requirements or skills. Or the employer may actually say, hindi na lang natin ipagpatuloy yung petition sa'yo, they will actually ask somebody else or pursue an application of other applicants. No? But, if your employer is actually nice and kind enough to actually say, give yourself time and then apply again, then it is your obligation to actually uh, prepare yourself or um, uh, cover your basis as far as the requirements are concerned. They can always refile. Now, uh, there are cases then na uh, hindi sila pumasa pero when they actually pass or they actually entertain another uh, agency this time pumasa sila now can employee A file a case against you for damages yes because you are not actually uh, dealing with them in good faith so kung bumagsak ka sa unang interview because of lack of skills and then nag entertain ka ng B then you have the obligation to at least tell the employee A na uh, I'm pursuing this against B, but you're subjecting yourself to uh, damages because you're actually breaching the contract for playing bad faith. A uh, question from Joey Amster. Attorney, in behalf sa mga baguhan, may as ano po ba ang grounds of denial ng visa? Nakakatakot po kasing isipin na 
maghihintay namin ulit. Okay, so there's a lot of reasons bakit madinay ang visa mo. So it could be in the part of the employer, it could be part of the employee. Uh, Pinag-usapan natin a while ago na madinay yung visa mo pag kunwari hindi nga, hindi ka nagko-comply doon sa basic requirements ng job. No? So example, the employer were able to justify the approval of the petition kasi uh, when they uh, when they actually submitted your papers uh, nagko-comply ka doon sa 12 month direct patient requirement but at the time of the interview hindi ka nagko-comply doon then you will be denied because at that point in time you did not comply or you did not at least uh, hindi ka nakapasa doon sa basic eligibility ng job description now another reason would be criminal issues o hindi ka pumasa sa medical exam and the medical exam are very specific so uh Sexual related uh, diseases can be a ground for the denial. If you have a criminal record, it also be a ground for denial. Uh, if you've been involved in an application that uh, has or naging fraudulent kas application before, uh, it could also be a ground for denial on your side. Now, may mga tanong uh, sa akin na pag kunwari ba nag-apply sila ng tourist visa and it was denied or fiancé visa and it was denied with LB uh, um, a ground para madina yung employment uh, based visa petition na no not necessarily unless my fraud involved dun sa previous application mo your previous denial will never be an issue uh, from Gerald Sangalang attorney what if you have a close relative brother or sister who is overstaying in the US Will it affect your EB3 application? No. But when you actually file your DS application online, you have the obligation to uh, disclose that you have immediate family or family members here. Um, there's a question there on status nila. If you don't know, just tell them that you don't know. But if you know na uh, green card holder sila or tourist visa holder sila, then you are obliged to say that. Uh, from Francis tayo attorney if hindi ko na mabasa sorry from Tansis Tayag attorney if an ang iyong employer di ko mabigyan ng work assignment 4 months waiting already is that considered a breach of contract from the employer okay at uh, sinagot ko ito kanina uh, depende kung anong sinabi niya doon sa contract kung hindi nagarantee ang employer that upon arrival in the US uh, mab mabibigyan ka agad ng trabaho and then ilang months na wala ka pa trabaho then that's considered breach of contract on their part for non-compliance of the provisions or promises nila sa contract but if there is no provision in there in your contract then unfortunately it's not considered a breach what's your remedy is kausapin mo yung employer mo na you've been waiting for them for a long time and of course you have to live uh, in America then they might be or uh, they might give you a permission to look for other jobs especially kung green card holder ka na kasi wala namang restriction pag green card holder ka so uh, you could work for any other employee uh, employers if you are a green card holder what prevents you from working for another employer is your contractual obligation not necessarily on on, on the immigration side so on the immigration side as a as a green card holder you can work for any other employer so, kung ganun yung problema mo na hindi ka nakapag-work agad, talk to your employer. And if they cannot give you or promise you na may job ka for the next X number of weeks, then ask for permission to be able to work for other employers. Uh, attorney, can you refer back to my query? Di ko po narinig. Uh, it's a long list. Irene, Buenzo, can you just rewrite your question please? Um... From Darin, bakit po tumagal ang papel sa USCIS? Dahil lang po ba sa influx ng applications? Uh, I'm not so sure what you're referring to, but if you're talking about the visa bulletin, uh, there's a lot of reasons bakit tumatagal. Uh, number one reason is visa availability. There's only 65,000 uh, visa numbers available in a year, and that's available for all applicants all over the world. It's allocated to per country. Pag max out na ang Philippines, then you have to wait for the, uh, another year ma-issue ang, 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 ang additional visa numbers. Now, if assuming the the visa bulletin says the particular category is current, tapos tumagal pa rin, then most likely it's a workload issue. I hope I was able to answer that. Um, Vijo de la Cruz. Attorney, meron po ako application H1B, mga 2008 bata, but 
due to personal reasons di kami natuloy although approved na po ng H1B and then nag-apply po kami ng AB3 last 14. Magkaproblema ba yung lalo na sa interview? Okay, so I think you're talking about two separate applications for as long as there is no fraud uh, involved in those two applications, the previous application should not impact or affect your new application. Tingnan mo lang again ang contractual obligations mo. Kasi uh, kung nag i ka ng bagong employer, then the first employer, potential employer could actually file damages against you. Okay, let's move forward. Relevant form of damages. Okay, ito maraming nagtatanong sa akin. Uh, attorney, pag nag-breach of contract ba ako or nag-buy out ako, ano bang pwedeng i-charge sa akin ng aking employer? Okay, let's talk about that. So, there's a lot of forms of damages, but what's more relevant for you are compensatory damages and liquidation damages. Ano yung mga compensatory damages? This could actually pertain to damages incurred by the employer or potential employer mo, actual cost of or expense nila. No? Uh, example, pagpa-file ng immigrant visa mo uh, or for attorney's fees. Later, pag-usapan natin ano yung hindi nila pwede ma-charge sa'yo. Or other costs nila to pursue your application. Those were called uh, actual damages. Compensatory damages also covers by potential loss nila kasi nag-breach of contract ka. Example, uh, contract mo is for 3 years. So, siyempre may expected income sila by employing you, nag-breach ka, then kawalan nila yon. They could actually charge it back to you. There's also a different type of damages na tinatawag liquidation damages. Kasi, hindi lahat ng expenses ng potential employer mo ma-quantify nila. No? So, ang ginagawa nila in the contract, sasabihin nila na pag nag-breach of contract ka or nag-buy out ka, cha-charge kita ng $20,000. No? Whether $20,000 is reasonable or not, is subject for debate. No? It depends on a lot of circumstances. It, debates, uh, it depends on a lot of consideration. So, you could not resolve that in the contract conversation kasi pumirma ka. The only way you could challenge the amount that's uh, that's stated in the contract is by talking to an employment lawyer and based on the conversation with the employment lawyer sasabihin niya will challenge this then that's your best time to to uh, to challenge the amounts uh, tanong from Aida uh, Attorney, I was informed that my petition was filed this June I have a daughter who will be turning 21 June 2018. What is the average period of processing? Ma'am, depende ma'am kung anong, anong kategory mo. Uh, kasi sa ngayon, ang EB3 nasa June 2015 pa. So, matagal-tagal pa na hintayan yun. But in any case, talk to your lawyer para mag-guide kayo. Okay, uh, from Mark Cooney. Attorney, my PD for my EB3 is June 2016. Is it wise to look for another visa option such as EB2 or H1B? Or that is it better to just wait for the current? So, kung EB3 ka at June 2016 ka, it's about one year na hinihintay mo para maging current ka. Now, generally, the National Visa Center within six months from the time na nagpa-process sila ng mga priority dates or priority cases na, or current na yung um, PD nila, nagpapadala na sila ng mga letters, the preparation letters. So, kung maglilipat ka ng bagong employer, again, you have to remind yourself, you may be subjected to damages or it will cause delay kasi nga, maglilipat ka ngayon ng ibang employer. Uh, Aldeg Soriano, yung computation ng compensation damages based ba sa actual salary per hour or based on the contract it's based on the contract generally speaking so ang sinasabi nila uh, ito yung sinasabi natin no, na pag compensatory damages ito yung actual damage uh, costs na na-incur ng employer it could also include costs na possibly mawala sila sa kanila kasi dapat 3 years kang nagtatrabaho sa kanila this applies more on the agency side um the, kung hindi very clear ang basis ng calculation, normally the employer will give you a specific amount. It could be 20,000, 
it could be 30,000. Ang sinasabi ko nga sa ano kanina, if you would want to challenge the amount of the damages in the contract, then you can talk to an employer, uh, employment lawyer because you cannot resolve that by merely talking to your employee and challenge the amount. In the first place, you signed the contract. Uh, magsasagot lang ako ng tanong dito. Is it it more expensive from Laika? Is it more expensive for them to come after someone for damages than to just let them out of the contract? How many times do the actually go after someone for the fees? Okay, well, there is actually what we call uh, administrative feasibility. So, example, uh, ang sinabi doon sa contract, uh, pag nag-breach ka, 10,000 lang ang i-charge sa'yo. But if I will enforce the contract, uh, I will hire a lawyer and the cost of hiring a lawyer will be equal or more than 10,000, then the employer may actually say, sige, pagbigyan ko na lang to. Uh, hindi ko na siya i-charge doon sa 10,000. But, some employers don't consider amounts of money only. Yung employer then gusto nilang election yung tao na uh, I just want to file a case against you for the sake of filing against against you. If you are actually breaching the contract, then I will make your life not easy in the U.S. You have to pay me regardless of the amount. Now, will they? Will all employers enforce the damage? provision of the contract? No. What we are saying is it's discretionary on the employer to enforce the contract. If they don't want to enforce the contract, then masay uh, swerte ka. But under the contract, they have all the legal rights to pursue that against the employer, or the employee. Jolie Beer, attorney, if under the contract, the penalty for the breach is set $10,000, does it mean that it can go higher kasi pwede pa sila magdagdag. Again, it really depends on the terms of the contract. When that time comes, I would recommend that you talk to a lawyer to review the terms. No? Kasi most cases, pag sinabi nilang 10,000 yung damage liability mo, chances are yun na lang yung isa-charge nila. But kung mayroon pang other provisions that on top of the 10,000 meron silang idagdag, then you agreed to that provision. But to better protect yourself as a lawyer to review it for you. Because there are words used in the contract that you understood it differently in a layman's world but has legal implications in your contract. So before you sign anything, before you talk uh, to your employer, if you are already decided to transfer to another employer and you thereby uh, committing a breach of the contract, I would recommend you talk to a lawyer first before you sign anything. Uh, Estela Marie Castillo, attorney NCLEX, Visa Screen, Airfare, Attorney's Fees, Immigration, shouldered by the nurse and paid 75000 to the agency employer. Is that legal? Okay, to better answer that question, Estela, you go back to the terms of the contract. Ang sinasabi natin kanina, Visa Screen, NCLEX, Licenses, legally, hindi obligated ang employer to pay that for you. If ikaw ang nagbayad nun, you cannot ask reimbursement from the employer unless sinabi ng employer that in the contract na sila ang magbabayad nun. Uh, we'll talk about filing fees and attorney's fees uh, in my slides uh, kung sino dapat ang nagbabayad. Now, you paid 7500 to the agency employer. Is that legal? Again, if you sign the contract, whether it's 20000 it's 50000 when you sign the contract, then you agreed to the terms. If you want to challenge the amount stated in the contract, then talk to an employment lawyer. No? But that's too late already. You signed the provision. Now, kung it's a challenge ng lawyer yan, uh, then they will just challenge whether or not it's reasonable under the circumstances. Then, uh, there's a lot of conversation on that. Uh, one question uh, na lang for damages. Okay, hindi ko na makita. So, we'll move on to the next topic. Okay? Thank you. Uh, immigration cost. Ito na yung maraming nagtatanong, no? 
Uh, as far as the immigration costs are concerned, employers shall shoulder the cost of filing the H-1B petition. So, yung cost involved nila na pag-labor certification, hiring and selection process, pag-post ng advertisement and so on and so forth, they cannot file, uh, they cannot charge it to the potential employee. It's against the law. Now, most, some employers will actually cover all costs, in, including filing ng I-140 petition, including the premium processing, including the green cards. In most cases, potential employers will not cover the costs of the petition for dependents. So, kung may asawa kayo, may anak kayo, sasabihin ng employer na kayo ang magbayad dyan, then they have all the, the legal right to, to charge that to you, or at least give you the full responsibility of paying the costs for your dependents. Uh, cost of dependents, yun yun. Uh, pag kunwari, nag-recapture kayo, or lumipat kayo ng agency, and they need to file the I-140 at kailangan ng premium processing, kung ikaw ang nag-request ng premium processing, then they can charge it to you. Pero kung sila ang nag-decide, then they cannot charge it back sa employee. Okay? Now, green card fees, ito yung mga expenses na when you are going to pursue your interview at the embassy, then the employer may charge it to the employees. It's allowed. Now, let me read some questions here related to immigration costs. Okay, wala akong nakitang tanong. Uh, let's go to the next topic. Contract buyouts. I'm already just maybe three slides away from my presentation. Buyout provision in a contract are per se legal. No? So, hindi ibig sabihin kasi may mga nagtatanong sa akin na attorney, pag kunwari ba magkakaproblema ba ako sa immigration? Well, it depends, no? And we'll talk about that in later. But, contract provisions per se are actually uh, legal in uh, for immigration cases. Uh, subject to the potential if to paying damages, no? So, kunwari, uh, nag-decide ka ngayon na bibilhin mo yung contract for whatever reasons. Uh, dahil ba may nakita kang new agency or hindi mo gusto yung agency mo ngayon and you are going to pursue other means of getting your green card, then you are subjecting yourself to potentially paying the damages as stipulated in the contract. Uh, we have one question from Justine Gonzalez. One of the agency in NYC, they asked for the nurse to pay all the costs. Is it legal for EB2, lawyer's fees, and why I-140, and etc.? So again, for the I-140, they there is no law that actually... Uh, prohibits the employer from charging it back uh, for your green card application they may or may not cover that they can charge it back to you ang hindi lang allowed sa kanila na charge sa'yo is the perm and the H-1B filing uh, so I hope that's clear already um Justin Gonzalez, for EB2, during the interview in the U.S. Embassy, the rate is 50 per hour. Pero, sa actual rate is 30. Is it legal? Again, we talk about that. It's actually considered a breach of contract. No? Because legally speaking, they are obliged to pay you what's written on the contract. Now, in actuality, again, just make sure na uh, klaro ang basis ng calculation nila now kung ang reduction from 50 to 30 are basically on uh, withholding and other payment of uh, benefits then it could be uh, a, a legal deduction no? so ang recommendation ko is talk to your employer first ask for clarification bucket my difference from 50 to 30 uh, if, they put, if they could not explain it, uh, explain it very well or hindi ka convinced na legal, then consult an employment lawyer. Uh, Francis Tayag, Attorney, if mag-breach ng contract, mahirapan ang employee mag-apply ng citizenship. We'll talk about that on my last slide, uh, buyouts. So, this is second to my last slide. 
Um, ano pa ang mga question? Uh, Janet Amaba. Sir, may I ask what are possible reasons why my I-140 approval takes so long? It was filed last August 2016. Until now, the status still received. Thank you. Uh, again, in the I-140, there is what we call the premium processing. You have to pay additional 1,220 plus uh, fee to have um, your I-140 application decided within by law 50, uh, three weeks. Uh, but uh, again, uh, kung hindi naman siya EB2, EB2 man siya nasabi mo, uh, there is really no, uh, it doesn't make sense na mag premium processing ka kung EB3 ang application kasi it still is a one year or more na maghihintay ng priority dates. Uh, Aldeg Soriano, nag-charge ang agency ng 155,000 damages. Are you serious? If that is the case na 155, even if you sign the contract, I would recommend you to talk to an employment lawyer. Uh, that sounds unreasonable to me. I don't know what that meant. Uh, for a uh, for a new nurse, even a nurse in New York, that's already too much. That could actually eat up their one-year salary. So talk to an employment lawyer. Um, Irene, attorney, I was filed through EB2 by an immigration lawyers and got approved. But after paying the fee, the fee bill, it was withdrawn by the employer. Does this happen often? Uh, okay, so withdrawal by the employer. The rule is, if your green card application or 485 has been pending for six months or more, a withdrawal by or abandonment by the employer who filed the petition will not impact your green card application. So, if you actually said that it's withdrawn, uh, I am not so sure if you comply with the timing of yung kung kailan na pending yung green card application mo. But if the green card application was pending for at least six months, the withdrawal of the original petition should not impact your green card application. Uh, another question here. My friend ap applied for EB3 but his mother is a TNT in the USA. Will there be a problem if hindi niya i-disclose? No, you have to disclose that. Uh... Even if, um, I'm not so sure in the employment base, kasi sa family base kasi, you have to, you have to di disclose the status of your immediate relatives. Uh, but as far as the question of whether or not you have to disclose your mother being in the U.S., then this, you have to disclose. It's not even a choice. Uh, the application is for you. It's not about your mom. They are not going to use your application to chase after your mother. So, uh, I would recommend de uh, declare your mother's or your friend's mother in the application. The worst thing that would happen kung hindi mo siya disclose, then they will find you not disclosing fact, misrepresenting, committing fraud. Then you can be denied and banned forever. Uh, Aldeg Soriano, ano maximum damages? Again, it depends on the circumstance. No, The only requirement as far as the law is concerned is that the amount should be based on some reasonable assumptions. The problem is, what constitutes reasonable depends on the circumstance. So, it really is a case-to-case -case basis. So, it depends. Uh, we have five minutes left and I am out about for my last uh, two slides. So, pag nag-contract buyouts, what does, how does that impact your application? Impact on immigration process. If you buy out the contract before the interview, then it may cause delay in the process because it requires recapturing the I-140. It means a new agency will be pursuing your application. In some cases, it may also draw suspicion because the petition may be placed into admin processing. No? So, if you are already in the process, may interview ka na, don't entertain buying out before the interview because it will not actually cost you any good. No? If you would want to pursue buying out the contract, I would recommend buying that when you're already here in America. No? 
And then, if you would buy out the contract after obtaining the green card, in very rare cases, during your citizenship application, the officer may ask if you are still employed by your employer who filed a green card for you. Now, there's uh, the primary reason why the officer would ask that is there are cases wherein some uh, illegitimate employers will file cases or petitions for someone just to get a green card. Then after that, they would actually sell out the contract as opposed to buying out and then file a new case for another uh, beneficiaries. So I'm not saying that this happens all the time. Uh, in my case, when I applied for my citizenship, I was asked whether or not I still work for the same employer that hired or, that, or filed for or sponsored my green card. So, uh, yun lang yung implication doon. I just want to remind everybody, a contract, a buyout provision in a contract is per se legal. Uh, for immigration purposes, it might just uh, cause suspicion in the minds of an officer and they might actually put you some more time to dig into your previous application and it caused some delay in your citizenship application. Okay. In my last slide, so in summary, a contract is the law between the parties. So when there is a contract being offered for you and it sounds uh, exciting, enticing because you will soon be working in the United States, before you get into the excitement, I really would recommend that you talk to a lawyer to at least review the terms of the contract. Para hindi tayo dumating sa punto na nagre-reklamo ka ngayon kasi charge ka ng $60,000 as damages or $150,000 for damages in the first place you signed the contract. Now, if you have concerns, talk to the potential employer. The best time to actually resolve or raise your concerns is before you sign the contract. Now, if you reach into an agreement, then uh, at least convince the employer to say, can we include this in the contract para klaro? No? Now, if you don't have an agreement, then don't sign the contract. Because if you do sign the contract, then it may be too late for you to complain. Uh, again, alam ko na sa Pilipinas, anything that you get a job offer from the U.S., it's, uh, it sounds like a better life for you. But again, uh, before you get into the excitement, have somebody review the contract. Uh, I will just take some few questions here uh, before I close this session. Uh, from Edward, Filipinas. Uh, hi, attorney. What if during the process waiting for PD, nurse decided to withdraw application in present agency? What will be the application? Uh, okay, so during the process, kina, uh, sinabi ko na kanina na whether is it before the green card interview or after, I will just go back to that slide. Okay? Uh, before the embassy interview, it will cause delay in the process because you have to recapture the I-140 because there's a new substitution of employer, then it might draw suspicion, placing your petition into administrative processing. Uh, if you want to withdraw from the process after you obtain the green card, uh, that doesn't make sense anymore, but you are subjecting yourself to uh, damages and you might be questioned again during your citizenship application. Uh, one last two questions and I will close the session. And again, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to explain or answer your questions. Uh, topics outside employment contracts and U.S. immigration will be tackled in the next session. I will just post it in Lefora. Uh, it is really based on the questions that's been posted to me. So last two questions. Uh, Maribik Koa, attorney, pag may approval po ba ng I-140 but na abandon ng employer and by checking the USSK status it says revoke the approval does it mean na invalid na yung PD yeah that actually means that uh, they are actually within the time wherein your original petitioner could withdraw or abandon your application uh, so in that case I would suggest that you reach out to them uh, kung hindi sila sumasagot, then that justifies you to look for another employer. One last question. 
uh, from Mark Conception. After completing the terms of the contract and you left the employer that sponsored your green card, will it affect your application in the citizenship? Again, if it's already if your terms of the contract have already been completed, and if the officer asks you in your citizenship application if whether or not you're still working for the same employer, tell them my contract has is already um, completed or at least the terms. So it will not uh, raise suspicions at all, uh, because again you are in good faith in completing. Why are there so many people crying or putting crying uh, icons? Uh, this is not. This is just the first session that we will have. Uh, we will have more sessions in the future. Uh, again, thank you very much. If you have other more, uh, you have more questions, just write in. Write, write down in the comment section. I will respond to them as soon as I can. Uh, and thank you again for giving me the opportunity. Good night.